Hey guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks, here today with another episode of Motion 360. And uh, it's weekend, I'm working in a shop, and uh, one of the ways I get ideas for new products, and actually just things to talk to you guys about, is just by working on cars myself. Uh, we always have a few projects going here and there, R&D, or just some own personal uh, race car projects. But anyways, today I was working on some uh, tubing uh, for this Fox body that we're uh, doing R&D on. And it occurred to me, I'm like, it took me a few years uh, before I really kind of got the hang of proper pipe fit up uh, when I was building turbo pipe or cold side for supercharger or turbocharger or even exhaust. And uh, in the beginning, it just seems like you're so excited to just get things together and make it work and hook up your turbo and uh, make it spool up and make power that uh, in the beginning, uh, the first kit or two kits, whatever, if you don't have a lot of fabrication background, uh, you're probably going to build it the wrong way. Uh, there's a lot of good information out there, but um, there's also a lot of information. So a couple of the uh, key of components for me was uh, getting the right tools for the job. So when I first started building turbo kits, I had like a bench grinder, you know, the little circular one, and I had a uh, sawzall and a chop saw. And while those work pretty good, uh, I also have a TIG welder, I guess, um, my pipe fit up always sucked. And, um, you know, I was learning how to weld and I feel like it just really compounded all my issues. So, um, as I evolved, I started doing two or three turbo kits a winter uh, or off season. And um, I started picking up all these little tools along the way. And I noticed uh, this weekend when I was working on stuff, I'm like, man, this has really gotten a lot easier since when I first started. And uh, one of the most important parts is just tools. So. Um, today I just wanted to talk about one uh, tool that made a huge difference. Um, you know, whether you're cutting your pipes with a bandsaw, uh, if you're cutting it with a uh, vertical or horizontal, if you're cutting with a chop saw, or if you're kind of grinding things by hand, uh, I feel like one of the most important uh, pieces you need to have is a belt sander. Uh, that made a huge difference, whether I was making bracketry or if I was making turbo piping. When you cut a pipe in a bandsaw, horizontal or vertical, either one of two things is going to happen, especially when you're building hot side where there's not really any silicone couplers. Uh, you know, with cold side and silicone couplers, you can get away with a lot because you have a little bit of flex room. Not that you really want to tweak those couplers, but uh, a little bit of movement is almost never noticed. But hot side wise, you're trying to hit uh, two points together that are rigid. And uh, so, you know, a little bit of an angle or whatever is a huge deal. So I used to try and do it with a um, air grinder. It just never worked. You would always have big gaps because you can't ever get it perfectly straight. Um, which is why the bandsaw for me was a huge benefit. Um, this you can get these things anywhere from like a hundred bucks all the way to thousand, two thousand um, dollars. You can get them at local hardware stores. I really like this rigid um, stationary one. It has a disc sander, which we don't use anymore because I have a big disc sander. Um, and then it has a belt sander, and uh, there's two port parts to it. So the top is, if you have a, uh, if you need to really tweak an angle, you can kind of just sit it here, and run it on here until it gets to that angle. Um, the other part is the round part. Um, so it has a mandrel on the end or a roller, and this one just so happens to be a three inch roller. It's six inches wide, so you can really, you know, if you're coming in to do a transition on a turbo pipe, you can really lay a pipe over as much as you want and uh, you know you're still going to have a lot of trial and error and you're still going to have to um, you know tweak things and go back and forth but it really makes it to where when you hit that angle you have a pipe that the fit up is perfect and uh, I don't care how good of a welder you are if you don't have good fit up your weld's going to suck. Uh, that was something that took me a long time to learn you know as my uh, welding skills got better I would be good welded well, I'd do joints well and all this stuff, and then you'd come across a problem joint and it just screws up the whole hot side or a whole downpipe, and that just kind of stinks, it's kind of uh, disheartening. So um, as I got these tools to help me uh, make the joints better, it made all the difference in the world. So the round one is nice because you can actually uh, coat a joint really easy. You know, you can just take a straight pipe and uh, mark the angle and just kind of eyeball it and run it in and you'll eventually hit the joint. Uh, now why is this important? Well, as the season goes on, right now everybody's building combos for next year and that's great, everybody's excited. Um, everybody has a different skill level. 
you know, and even me, when I first started, my welds were just, they just looked like crap. You know, you just have big gaps and they'd fill in, and of course it's gonna work. Uh, you fire the car up, it runs, so what happens is as it expands, it contracts, expands, it contracts, this breaks at the joint. And uh, mid-season I see just tens, twenties, hundreds of people, uh, my car won't make boost. Uh, it's not making any power. Can somebody help me? And uh, more times than not, it's uh, wastegate joint breaking uh, because if they're like me, when I first started out, you just triangle those joints, uh, lay a bunch of filler rod in there or uh, big wire, and you fill the joint, and you're like, cool. And when it works, it works. Uh, what you don't realize is what the stress, the heat, the vibrations, uh, the expansion, contraction of the actual uh, moving stuff around in the engine bay uh, will eventually break that. Even uh, something like if you don't have this wastegate properly supported going down the track, uh, you know, the weight of the wastegate, if it's way out here, it's going to bounce, it's eventually going to crack it off. Side note, one of the reasons why I never ever wrap, wrap turbo pipe in unless I absolutely have to uh, because it's close to something is the pure fact that you'll never see the cracks in the piping. Um, if this breaks and this is wrapped, it's going to take you a lot longer to find a problem than if it's not. Uh, a lot of times you have to take the pipes off the car. Uh, you're going to try and look for everything else that could be wrong before you unwrap this. And more times than not, if it's your first kit, uh, if the fit up wasn't perfect, even sometimes when it is perfect, it'll break. Um, this pipe will be broken. Even the smallest crack letting air out is going to greatly reduce and uh, affect the performance of your turbo combo. I've had little tiny uh, cracks and it doesn't seem that big, but you got to remember when that piping gets 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 degrees, it really is going to pull apart and it's going to let the exhaust out and uh, it does make a difference. And uh, like I said, more times than not in the middle of the season when stuff like that happens, that's what's the problem. So especially if you're a beginner, uh, really consider your pipe fit up. So the reason why I like this I can sit here, since this has a three inch mandrel, a lot of times your merge is gonna go into a three inch, like on an LS or a mod motor, and uh, you can get a perfect fit up. Now, if you look at this um, fit up here, I did this in about uh, five minutes. Um, so what I can do now, um, since it's fit up perfectly, I can evenly lay in the TIG wire, so I have less chance of uh, you know undercutting the weld, which makes it weak. Um, also, when it's fit up nicely, um, especially on stainless, if you're gonna if you're gonna back purge the tubing, um, you can it doesn't let the gas out, so it's gonna be a more effective back purge. It's not gonna be just coming out everywhere and not effectively back purging. Um, and that's important too, because just like we talked about carbonizing, uh, if you get a pure weld, it's gonna be stronger. And I feel like the most important weld on your entire turbo combo is either in your headers or in your wastegate. Um, if those aren't the fit ups and the welds aren't good on those, you're gonna have problems. Now, I get a lot of guys who are like, I got this Chinese turbo kit for 150 bucks. That's great. Let me know how it's doing in a couple of years when uh, you beat on it a lot. Uh, expansion, contraction, making a lot of horsepower, a lot of heat. Um, those non back purged, um, not so great fabricated kits, they might be good. Uh, a lot of them have come a long ways, but make sure you try to find what's back purged and had good fit up and good welds. Uh, that's a really important thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I grind a tube and how I mark it and uh, set it up um, if I'm going to put a wastegate on there uh, because you have a different angle all the time. So what I will do is I'll actually just kind of hold this pipe up here and just eyeball um, how I want this thing to um, lay out on here. I'll draw a sharp, sharpie mark right here, and this will give me like a reference point. So this is an exact science. Uh, I've had dreams of making a tool that makes this really easy. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, maybe somebody makes one out there already. But if you eyeball it with a sharpie, as you run this thing in, you'll be able to dial in how how uh, you know the pitch that you're putting it in at. So that'll kind of dictate what your end cope looks like. So if this is your first time building a turbo kit, you may or may not know. But as far as a wastegate goes, I talked about it a little bit in my wastegate video. You always want the wastegate to catch the flow of the hot side. So uh, for instance, say if the, your T4 or T6 flange is right here and your exhaust is directing this way, um, the more that you can make this uh, pipe make a more natural flow path, uh, the better. If you key it 
um, the air going past it is going to just have a lot harder time getting off into it to bleed off to control the boost. Uh, that's fine on some combos um, where you're not trying to get rid of a bunch of power, but if you're in a combo that you need to get rid of a lot of power, you're trying to maximize the tracks control, uh, your power management and all that type of stuff, which is important in almost every combo, you're going to want to make it hit the flow. So if you do it like this or you know, even the more angle, the better. Uh, as that flow goes by, it's going to be more um, apt to go up through the wastegate. And that's going to give you more control. It's going to bleed off better and just be a more efficient system, which is why we're coping this in general. Um, so you can see this one's already coped, but I have another tube right here that I'm going to go ahead, um, since I've already done that one, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I do it. So on this uh, piece right here, Say, you know, you kind of pulled it up inside the car and this is too little of an angle. This is, this is going to hit the turbine housing. So um, what I do is I just hold it up and then I just kind of eyeball it and I just say, you know, if I, if I run the angle like this, it's going to be perfect where I want to go. Um, and then from there, once you get this coped here, it's really easy to tune it in less or more. Uh, it's just getting that general cope and that general idea down to get through there. So. The other thing that I should note is when you're doing this, um, you really want to get the inside uh, the inside cutout to be about the same. So what I do is on um, my big pipe, I'll trace around this, uh, just for time's sake, I'll draw around it. So the next thing you have to do is get this hole, since it's oblong, um, what I'll typically do is take a... Uh, hole saw and I'll get the closest size. Now remember a hole saw is never, if it holds up and it's line to line, that's too big. Uh, you know, a hole saw moves around an, up to an eighth of an inch uh, on all sides. So find one that's undersized, drill it out, and then from there what you're going to have to do is hit it with a file or a uh, get a little die grinder with a double flare uh, tip on it and just work it around. And the important part about that is if there's a bunch of uh, material overlapping on the inside of the hole, that's going to be a heat point. So that, that material is either going to fall off if it's jagged and go through your turbo, or it's going to block flow and create excessive heat at that joint because all that's just basically focusing on that point. Uh, so that's another spot for failure, but also inefficiency on the wastegate. So there's no real easy shortcut um, on this. Sometimes, depending on how your joint is, it's easier and less and harder. Um, but you really want to make sure you spend a lot of time on that cut. Um, other thing is you don't want to go wider than the pipe. Um, you know, you just want it basically the same size as the ID of this pipe. That way you have a really good surface to weld to. Uh, you know, if you have a joint or a gap in your joint, it's going to be a lot harder and a lot weaker of a joint. So if you can get this pipe to land, you know, this is 65 thousandths. If you can get it to land right on at 65 thousandths, you'll have lots of material to work with. and then. Another thing is if this pipe is short, you can come back and kind of work it around after you've welded it. Uh, but really focus on getting that inside cut right. If it's too small, it's crap. Uh, if it's too big, you're going to create a weak joint potentially. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. It's be important, or that's always important, is have safety glasses. Sometimes I'll forget and I'll come over here and sure as hell, a uh, piece of metal is going to shoot up and hit you in the face. Uh, and it somehow always finds a way to hit you in the eye. Always wear safety glasses. I don't mean to be Mr. Safety, but I just think it's an important thing. So in the interest of time, since I already marked that, what I did is I went to my vertical bandsaw. Uh, you can do this with the horizontal. You can do it with the saw is all you can do with a cutoff wheel. Uh, I just cut the angle. So what this will do is it'll save belt, it'll save lots of time, it gets rid of all that stuff. Um, but you'll notice I left it a little bit short of that mark because as I start to grind that away, I want the I kind of want it to create its own fish mouth. So if you cut it too short in the beginning, Especially if you already have a predetermined length you want, um, it's going to be way too short by the time you grind it all down. So, what I'm going to do uh, is come back here and see how it already almost fits on this uh, belt sander as an angle. Uh, I'm going to come back, turn this thing on.
So after a few minutes of uh, doing this, um, you'll get a good fit up. So since this is a three inch pipe and this is a three inch main drill, you'll see that this tube ended, it just comes out perfect. Um, really makes the welding process easy. The one thing I'll note is uh, when you get done, you're gonna have a burr on this. What you need to make sure you do is not grind the hell out of that um, end. If you create a real point um, and then you have a small weld on the end, what that's gonna do is create a real thin joint, which is also gonna be really weak and ineffective. So um, just as important as when you get done creating a good joint, make sure you don't over uh, chamfer the end of that tube. Uh, just be real cognizant about how much you do it. Um, one thing I'll note is making sure you have a really good firm grip on this thing as you put it in. The reason I like this uh, floor model belt grinder is it's real heavy duty. Uh, it doesn't have a, a tendency to like tip over if you use a little tiny table mount once. They're good, you just need to make sure you're clamped down. And then also on a heavy table, because if you're pushing into this thing, which it requires a little bit of force, you um, have a chance of tipping it over. So also uh, have a fresh belt, it always helps. This one's a little worn out. Um, and then adjusted properly helps big time too. You don't want this belt moving back and forth. I think you saw in the video, mine was moving back and forth. So I need to adjust it a little bit. Um, last thing I'll note is, so sometimes not every joint is gonna be a perfect straight on joint. You're gonna want to lay over a little bit. So you can pretty easily accomplish that by, uh, you know, to create a kind of a, I don't know where to be, 90 degree joint, you're gonna come straight on. Well, if I went like this um, and tipped it into it, that's gonna create kind of a compound uh, coat. So that's a nice option there, but if you don't pay attention to it and you're not trying to do that, it's pretty easy to do. So just make sure you're kind of like straight on 90 degrees coming into it. And just take your time and, uh, you know, patience is a virtue in this one. Um, the better, the longer you take, the better coat you're gonna get. Uh, and it's a nice piece. At the end, you'll have a really nice fit up. It's gonna make your weld better. It's gonna make your piping stronger, uh, more durable and I think you're gonna be a lot happier with the results. And this is uh, really not expensive. If you plan on doing a few turbo kits, uh, definitely invest in a belt sander. So anyways, I know this was kind of long-winded, but fit up is everything, guys. You can be the best welder in the world. If your fit up sucks, your piping's gonna suck. Uh, if your piping sucks, it's probably gonna crack. It's gonna cause you problems. It's never an opportune time. Uh, it's gonna happen when you're at a race in the final round. Uh, a long ways away from home, don't have a welder. So take the extra 10, 15 minutes, um, get your pit, fit up good, spend some money on the right tools. Uh, again, you don't have to buy the most expensive one. I really like this unit. Um, there's a ton of them on Amazon, on Google. Uh, just look them up and try it out. See what works for you the best. But concentrate on your fit up. Um, use some of the tools and uh, tips that we gave you here in this video, and I promise you, you'll have a lot better results. Anyways, guys, if this video brought you any value, if you learned some tips and tricks, whether you're starting out or if you've been doing it for a while, uh, if you just saw a tool you like, please be sure to share it, like it, tell a friend about it. We love when we spread the message. It's cool to see everybody learn and get better. Anyways, thanks for tuning in to Motion360. Stay tuned, there's more to come.